Now, NASA claim that the moon is going to be undeniably beautiful as the moon comes closer to the Earth than it has for almost 70 years. I'm going to call it a super moon. Shawnee Morris, who's a former secretary and a current member of the Midlands Astronomy Club, you gave it a, a Latin name there a minute ago. What were you going to call it? Perigee Sizigi. Very good. Perigee Sizigi is or Sizigi, whichever you want to use it. There's a Y and a Z in there, so. <laughs> <laughs> whatever way we look at this and whatever way we want to call it, this is a once in a lifetime event for most people because this isn't going to happen again for, I think, another 60 years. So. Uh, 2034 is the next time. 25th right. of November 2034 will be the next time the moon will be almost this close. Uh, now this is this is all about astronomy and you know planetary physics. Okay, everything that ha- revolves around another object doesn't follow a perfectly circular path. It's all elliptical. So even in Earth's orbit around the sun, you've got a point at uh, in January, round about between the second and the seventh of January every year. That's when Earth is at its closest to the sun. So in June, it's actually at its furthest. The moon in its 28-day cycle around Earth also follows an elliptical path. So every 28 days, there's a point where it's at its furthest and at its closest. The furthest is apogee, its closest is perigee. Does that explain why sometimes it looks a bit bigger? Now, probably not on the scale that we're going to see today, but sometimes it's maybe it's not your eyes playing tricks then. The moon can be a bit closer in its cycle anyway. It can be. Now, the exception about today's supermoon is because compared to when it would be at its furthest, there's a 14% size difference. So that is pretty big. That also equates to nearly a 33% increase in brightness. So you do get an exceptionally bright and slightly larger moon. Now, to the ordinary Joe Soap observer, uh, I'll put you into that category. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be classed this way. <laughs> the uh, moon wouldn't necessarily look like it's totally different compared to the full moon this time last month. Uh, but if you are someone who would follow it, it would look a little bit brighter. And if you, were, if you are into astrophotography and you could take that photograph from today and compare it in 28 days' time for the next full moon, you would notice that it does look a little bit bigger today than it will in a month's time or a month ago. You were telling me before we came on, it's actually in about half an hour's time or so when it's going to reach its peak. But obviously here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're daytime at the moment. That's so we right. have to wait a little bit later on. In terms of for Ireland, we're going to start to see the effect after sundown? Yes, uh, from Tullamore or the Midlands perspective, it'll be five minutes past five, four minutes past five that the moon will rise up from the eastern horizon just as the sun has gone completely down below the western horizon. OK, that's a, it's like a 12 hour gap between the two. Uh, officially, the full moon will occur at 1.52 p.m. And the closest approach is at 11.23 a.m. in less than half an hour's time. So that is, there's your official figures. Now, that change between 11.23 a.m. and when we see it after 5 p.m. this evening, it's insignificant. It's still going to be bright and big, and I would urge people to go out and enjoy it. Yeah, because the change would have to be marginal. Plus, the fact that it's uh, nearly 15% bigger, you're yeah. still going to notice this, That's aren't it. you? Have you ever noticed that the moon would look big at certain times of the night at all? Sometimes, yeah. You often would wonder whether it's your mind playing tricks with you, but yeah. When do you think? Uh, it tends to be kind of around Christmas, doesn't it? That kind of time of year, no? No. Actually, what I was hoping you might say is when you see it low on the horizon. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people think that, you know, when they see the moon low down, it looks huge and compared to when it's high up in the sky. But that is an optical illusion. And it's no different to tonight. You know, the moon will always be roughly the size of a one euro coin held in your pinched fingers at arm's length. That represents the size of the moon. It's technically one degree right. arc, right? When you're looking at it towards the horizon, you've got buildings and trees to give it a sense of perspective. Hold that one euro coin out in your fingers at arm's length. It'll perfectly still cover the moon at the horizon as it will when it's up overhead later on in the night. How spectacular is this going to be if NASA are saying that it's going to be undeniably beautiful? Well, they'll have, you know, the, the kind of telescopes that can measure the intensity, the luminosity, and all of this that's coming off of the moon, scientifically speaking. For you and I, it will look a little bit brighter and it should look a little bit bigger. But like I was saying, unless you're someone who's following this month to month, it may not look like it's going to change. However, this is a perfect time to, you know, you know, bask in the glory. The media is latching onto this. Take the kids out if it's clear. If you've got a telescope, enjoy it. That increase in brightness will not damage your eyes. It's not like the sun where the heat is what's doing the damage, not the brightness as well. So the moon's brightness, it causes a little bit of glare. But, you know, that increase in brightness also offers uh, just 
the, the chance to go out and enjoy this. People take a lot, lot more notice of this when it's in the media like this. I'm going to give away a bit of a secret about Roy Jennings. Go on. He likes to photograph the sky. Does he? He does. Is he, he going be... to get some spectacular shots tonight? He would. I would encourage him to, you know, take the thumb out, set up the, set up the equipment this evening and, uh, you know, take it if, when it's low down, take it when it's high up, take it if it's uh, against uh, like a church steeple or a silhouette, something like this, get some really nice artistic astrophotography in, into it. Uh, you get some very rare, uh, nice photography because not everyone would think of doing this kind of uh, um, field of photography. So, Midlands Astronomy Club, do you have anything planned tonight? Are you guys going to meet up to have a look? or what do you think? Uh, Not specifically tonight because it's being a work night and a school night as well. It's something that anyone can enjoy anyway. They wouldn't need the expertise of someone who's in an astronomy club to guide them because uh, the moon has always been there. It'll always be there again and it's just something that you can go out and enjoy uh, tenfold again tonight. Now, uh, in terms of other events, we are hoping to enjoy the moon on the top of Athlone Castle on Saturday, November 19th. We have a public event there, totally free. It's always very successful. We've had two, three, ne- nearly 400 people come before. Uh, you just turn up. We'll have telescopes. We'll have some, some short talks on top of the castle. The moon will be there that night as well, later on. So we'll be able to show you. If you haven't seen it through a telescope, we'll do it that night. It might not be the peak that it is tonight, but the moon is still going to look pretty good on the 19th, isn't it? It will. Now, it'll be at a phase whereby uh, it's what's called last quarter. So you'll see a half moon. And even at that, take it in in all of its glory when you're looking at the difference between daytime and nighttime. That little terminator, the shadow difference. You got, sh- you got peaks of mountains and catching the last rays of light in the shadow versus the bright rays from the craters on the day- daytime side. In a telescope, it looks fantastic.